decide to be generous. If you want to be more generous with more, learn to be more generous with less. It's just a very practical principle. It's not about whether you have a lot or a little. It's just a heart issue to say, God, whatever I do have, I want, I want to live open-handed. And honestly, that's the whole point of the message today, that wherever you are in life, however much God has blessed you with or however little right now you're struggling with, and I know that it's hard to make ends meet and make it in New Jersey. Everybody that lives in New Jersey that's thinking about moving out said amen, right? I mean, you know it's hard to do this, right? But, that, but it has nothing to do with what you have. So if you're here today and you're ready, you say, yes, I want to be more generous. I want to learn to live with an open hand. I want to give more than I receive because Jesus said it. With his own words, it's more blessed when we give than we, when we receive. And today is your day to pre-decide way before you make any money decisions that you're going to be generous. It's a pre-decision. Whether I have a lot, whether I have a dollar, nothing left over at the end of the week, or $10 or $100 or a million dollars, whatever I'm going to be. Because generosity doesn't happen by accident, and it's not about what you have or you don't have. It's about your heart, and it's about your hands. Everybody get it? You still with me? Okay, you haven't walked, nobody walked out yet? Okay, awesome, okay. So for the last couple of moments that we spend together today, some of you are like, wow, he's going to be short today. This is a miracle. Hold on, I don't know what's going to happen in this last part, okay? My clock says I got seven minutes before I'm in trouble. Okay, so here, last couple of moments as we talk about pre-deciding to be generous is this, three qualities of generous people. I just want to not only share, these are, you will find these consistent in people that you know in your life that are generous. And uh, I believe that if you go out and you try to find the most generous followers of Jesus, if you don't know any, text me. I'll point you to some people that have, I've shown to be super generous towards the things of God and towards needs that they see, right? I'll bet you you will find at least two out of three. But in most cases, you'll find all three of these qualities in people that have this, right? And more importantly, if you want to pre-decide to be generous with all your resources, so I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about time, attention, love, kindness, things that you do. If you want to be more generous, then these qualities actually represent action steps, Things that you can say today, God, help me to start to do these things, even though it's hard and I'm scared and I don't know what I'm going to do, help me to put these into place, okay? And so if you're still with me, here we go. Put your seatbelts on because these things have power to greatly change your life, okay? Number one, first quality, they plan to be generous. Generous people plan to be generous. Remember I said earlier in the message, nobody becomes generous by accident. They plan, right? In fact, it's exactly the opposite. Truly generous people have a plan in their life to be generous with whatever they have. Now, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, I thought being generous was random and spontaneous. How many of you, maybe you ever thought that? I thought that was generosity, like random, right? Like, you know, when an opportunity presents itself, I'm just going to randomly give. I got five bucks, 10 bucks, right? I'm going to randomly you know, give. Like, you know, when you see that uh, someone who's homeless on the street and you decide you want to help them with some money or you want to buy them some food, I thought that was, isn't that generosity, right? Maybe you found out from a life group that there's somebody in, in the church that doesn't have groceries. And isn't it generosity to go shopping for them and get groceries or give them some money, right? How many of you have heard of pay, that pay it forward thing? Like you pull up to the drive through and you pay for your stuff and you pay for the car behind you. Remember that was a big trend, right? And then the other person pulls up and they're like, oh, you've already been paid. Oh, I, I'll pay for the guy. And nobody wants to be the jerk who's like, awesome. And they take off and they end the streak, right? But, you know, isn't, isn't that generosity? How about with Teen Challenge? You guys, were, I believe it, you were generous, you gave, you heard a need, and you gave, right? But here's the thing, guys. The truth is that's how most people give. Like, that's basic giving. If you think about your life, and a lot, even a lot of your friends that don't give a hoot about Jesus or God, it's how people give, right? We see a need, it touches our heart, we feel bad, maybe we knew somebody who was struggling like that before, and we give, right? Maybe it's a sad story or an incredible testimony like last Sunday, and we say, like, yeah, I, I can't leave here without writing a $20 check or giving 50 bucks or buying a cutting board, right? Maybe you're sitting home, and all of a sudden, it's those sad puppy dog eyes that come on the TV at 2 in the morning. And Sarah McLaughlin is singing, in the arms of the angels. And you're like, oh, the cat, the dog, 50 bucks, whatever. Some of us give in fundraisers, right? Either because we feel we should or we feel guilty. You know how many cans of 
pop popcorn I have bought from bought from kids. Not because I needed popcorn, because I felt bad, and I'm like, I, I, I got to support the Boy Scouts, whatever. So I buy, buy the popcorn, right? All of us, sometimes it's pressure to give, right? When maybe you like me, I walk out of a store how many times, and some kid is nagging me for Heifer International. Anybody ever been hit by those guys? Heifer International. And they go, just sir, just one moment of your time. And I know you think I'm probably rude. Right? I'm like, I don't have time to talk to you right now, dude. I know what Heifer International is. I already gave my kids Heifer International. I don't want to get a goat for some family in Indonesia. I got to go, okay? Okay? It's, and, and, and those are the reasons that we give. Sometimes we even bring candy to church to fill Easter eggs. And that's good. I'm not saying those are bad things. And here's what, what, I, what I want you to understand. All of those things are examples of giving, not necessarily generosity. I want to make a difference between that today. That's my point. There, it's giving, and it's good, guys, right? And before you, we, you get defensive and be like, um, I thought that was generosity. No, I'm, it's great that you do that. It's wonderful. I do it too. We all do those things, guys. But, but here's what I'm saying, right? It's, it's, not, it's different than being generous. Uh, it's different. All of these examples of giving, and giving is good. Giving is something we should practice, and it's important that we learn to do that. But the things I mentioned are not examples of true generosity. Here's what I mean. Truly generous people don't need to be guilted. They don't need to be inspired. They don't need to be shamed. They don't need to be motivated, right? Generous people don't simply give because they're reactive. They, give, they don't just give because they see a need and respond. Truly generous people have a plan. They've already pre-decided, in my life, out of whatever God does for me, I want to give away. I want to be generous, and I'm asking God to do that. Check this out in Isaiah 32, 8. Look what it says. It says, but generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. That's right in the Bible. Generous people plan to be generous. According to Isaiah, generous people don't make excuses, right? If I had more, I would give more. When I make a little more money, I'll give more. They don't wait until, they don't wait until everything else is taken care of to make sure they have enough for all their wants and needs, and then if I have leftover, I give. No, they pre-decide according to a plan. Guys, I know so-